The top stories tonight in Y News. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. tells United States Secretary Lloyd Austin III that the U.S. must be involved in partnerships, most especially the country is traversing troubled waters. The Philippines and the United States agreed to designate additional Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement sites. Following the Senate's first official hearing on the controversial Maharlika Investment Fund, the Senate Minority Bloc maintains the bill should not hurdle the upper chamber and that the country does not need the proposed measure. And Myanmar's national election that is expected in August would be pushed back as the military government extends its state of emergency. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, February 2nd, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media channels. I am William Theo. First in the news, United States Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin III paid a courtesy visit on President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. in Malacanang Palace. The president acknowledged that the U.S. has been the Philippines' longest partner and ally. Nel Maribohok reports. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. told United States Secretary Lloyd Austin III that U.S. must be involved in partnerships, most especially the country is traversing troubled waters. The president made the pronouncement during the courtesy call of the U.S. defense chief and other officials this morning at Malacanang. As we traverse these uh, rather troubled waters, geopolitical waters, economic waters that we are facing, uh, I again uh, put great importance on that partnership, specifically with the United States, but all partnerships that, and alliances that we are able to make with our friends around the world. He added that the future of the Philippines will always involve the U.S. Again, I have always said uh, that it seems uh, to me that uh, the future of the Philippines, and for that matter, the Asia Pacific, will always have to involve the United States simply because those partnerships are so strong and so historically embedded in our, our common psyches that uh, it can only be an advantage to uh, both our countries. The chief executive thanked the U.S. defense chief for visiting the Philippines amid a very complicated situation in the region to exchange some ideas, thoughts and information with him on the current situation in the Asia-Pacific. Meanwhile, the U.S. defense chief promised to help modernize the country's defense capabilities as well as increase the interoperability of American and Filipino military forces. We do have a strong relationship and and uh, my goal, and certainly President Biden's goal, is to, is to strengthen that relationship uh, uh, in, in every way possible. You are a key ally and, and, uh, and an important ally. Uh, and so uh, from the uh, defense perspective, uh, we will continue to work together with, uh, with our great partners uh, to, uh, uh, to build and, and modernize uh, your capability as, as well as uh, increase our interoperability. So uh, we are very, very uh, uh, happy to be here once again, and uh, I look forward to a great discussion, Mr. President. Again, thanks for being such a great host. PBBM also received commitment from U.S. defense officials to provide humanitarian assistance to the victims of the tremor that rocked a Davao de Oro town on Wednesday evening. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The leadership of the Senate Minority Bloc remains firm that the country does not need the proposed Maharlika Investment Fund. Meanwhile, another lawmaker calls on the upper chamber not to lose focus on more important issues that plague the country. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. 
Following the Senate's first official hearing on the controversial Maharlika Investment Fund or MIF, the Senate Minority Bloc maintains the bill should not hurdle the upper chamber. Senate Minority Leader Aquilino Coco Pimentel says the proposal is unjustifiable and unclear, reiterating that the country has no surplus funds. For Pimentel, the minority cannot defend the indefensible. Lumabas lang kahapon yung dati na nating alam, di ba? Na, na depektibo talaga yung version na pinasa ng House na pinasa naman sa Senado. The lawmaker also questions the authority given to the Maharlika Investment Corporation to borrow money for the investment fund. Pimentel believes this may cause further ballooning of Philippine debt, which will be passed on to future generations. Isang challenge natin sa kanila yun. Itutuloy ba natin ang pagtatayo ng Maharlika Investment Corporation kung alisin natin ang kapangyarihan nitong mangutang? The Senate Minority Leader calls on the government to focus instead in managing its priorities. This, as Finance Secretary Benjamin Jokna noted in yesterday's hearing, that big-ticket infrastructure projects would be implemented faster through the use of the Wealth Fund, noting the budget cuts being made by Congress during deliberations on the national budget. Di ayusin natin ang ano, ayusin natin ang government processes, including the budget process, if that is the problem, na alam ni Secretary Jokna. Isa umpisa pa lang sa pag-present pa lang ng budget, di mag, matuto silang mag-prioritize o oh, hindi yung puro kalat lahat. Then the more important, once buhusan nila ng, ng pondo, na hindi namin ikakat kasi priority yun eh. For his part, Senator Juan Edgardo Sonny Angara is hopeful that the bill will improve under the Senate scrutiny. The lawmaker says some progress have been made in the proposed measure, including the placements of safeguards. Meanwhile, Senator Alan Peter Cayetano urges the Senate to focus on pressing matters that the country is facing instead of the Maharlika bill. The lawmaker believes the upper chamber should have a sense of urgency and prioritize issues that affect the daily lives of Filipinos, including high prices of commodities. He also also opposed the referral of the bill to the Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions and Currencies under the helm of Senator Mark Villar. Instead of this committee, the Government Corporations and Public Enterprises Panel. Villar has yet to announce the next hearing on the bill. Another bill seeking to create the MIF has been filed by Senator Rafi Tulfo. Harleen Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippines and the United States have agreed to designate additional Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement sites, but Defense Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. refused to announce the location of the additional EDCA sites. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. Department of National Defense or DND Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. would like to inform first the local government executives before announcing the possible location of the four Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement or EDCA sites. Secretary Galvez said this new EDCA location will allow more rapid support for humanitarian and climate-related disasters in the Philippines. Uh, we have agreed uh, uh, that uh, the, you know, the statement of the sites uh, will be concluded uh, once uh, we have already made uh, collaboration also with the local uh, communities. Because uh, when we, you know, when we make announcements, uh, we need to, you know, we need to, to this uh, uh, local government, the governors, and also the local populace to be consulted. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin III also said that the facility that they will build is not permanent and not military bases. We're not seeking permanent basing in the Philippines. As you heard us say in our statements here, uh, EDCA, EDCA is a cooperative agreement that uh, enables uh, rotational activities. And so it's a key pillar of our training and, and uh, opportunities for, uh, to strengthen our interoperability. And it also provides us the ability to uh, respond effectively to uh, humanitarian uh, issues and, and also uh, disaster relief uh, and, and other types of crisis. The two officials also ensure to deepen bilateral cooperation and remain committed to strong alliance. I am optimistic about the future of our alliance and I am confident that we will continue to work together to defend our shared values of freedom, democracy and human dignity. The United States and the Philippines are more than just allies. 
we're family. Uh, we are committed to, uh, to a strong alliance. Uh, the President uh, has said that our alliance now is um, more stronger and robust. Uh, we are looking forward that uh, we will have a high drive of uh, some activities uh, with uh, our allies. The DND said the EDCA is a key pillar of the U.S.-Philippines alliance which supports combined training, exercises, and interoperability between both forces. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A former top agriculture official sees the revival of the Food Terminal Incorporated could address the country's problem in the distribution of produce. The Bureau of Plant Industry noted that the processing facility for tomato is not enough to cater the oversupply in an area. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. There is no oversupply of tomato in the country, according to former Agriculture Secretary Manny Pinol. Pinol also noted that the country is importer of processed tomato products. Based on the record of the Philippine Statistics Authority, from January to September of 2022, the Philippine imported processed tomatoes of more than 43 million kilogram worth 36 million U.S. dollars. It includes tomato paste and ketchup. In fact, our sardines industry is uh, largely dependent on uh, tomato paste from uh, China. And... Uh, Ito yung isang opportunity na hindi nasilip ng ating, ng ating DA. The Bureau of Plant Industry or BPI admitted that the processing facility for tomato is not enough but they are now building more. Ang nagiging sanhi po niyan is may kakulangan po talaga sa mga processing facilities ng kamatis. And yun naman po ay ina-address na po ngayon ng department. Pinyol emphasized, that the big problem is on how to deliver the farmer's produce to other areas where it needed. He is recommending the revival of the Food Terminal Incorporated or FTI that was established during the term of former President Ferdinand Marcos Sr. Halimbawa yan, ang presyohan ngayon, dahil sa nabasa ko sa dyanyo, 3 to 15 pesos per kilo. Sinong, sinong farmer ang maglalakas loob niya na ibiyahe yung kanyang kamatis? from Nueva Vizcaya to, say for example, Bicol, ganun, ganun lang ang presyuhan ng per kilo. So only FDI can do that. Pinyol adds that National Food Authority or NFA warehouses can be converted to food consolidation centers. He also pushed for the creation of the food supply and demand map to identify what are planted in an area and where a particular vegetable is needed. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And for our news abroad, Myanmar's national election that is expected in August would be pushed back as military government extends its state of emergency. Anna Mansili reports why live. Good evening, Annie. Good evening, Jonah. Myanmar remains in an irregular situation and is not yet ready for a peaceful and stable election. Its military government, the National Defense and Security Council, or NDSC, said it is therefore extending the state of emergency for another six months. Tuesday's announcement, January 31, 2023, made via state-run MRTV television said. Analysts deemed the decision as the army's failure to quell widespread opposition and civil disobedience during the two-year seizure of power from the elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi. State media said the NDSC had a meeting on how opposition groups are seeking to take power through wrongful forcible means, such as assassinations, bombings, and destruction of state property. Meanwhile, the extension of the state of emergency would mean the postponement of election. Reporters say it will be held after accomplishing the provisions of the state emergency, though no exact date has been given. Critics say the military plan election will be biased and controlled as there is no free media and most of Suu Kyi's party have been arrested or gone into hiding. Giona? Thank you, Annie, for that live report. Australian experts campaign for public access to human papillomavirus or HPV vaccine for youth. 
for the youth. Monica Kalnas tells us why. Despite the pandemic and interference from highly religious schools, experts are very optimistic that cervical cancer can be eliminated by the year 2035, as the number of vaccinations is on the rise. Human papillomavirus, or HPV, is responsible for nearly all cervical cancers, as well as a variety of other cancers. It is a common virus transmitted by sexual contact, which usually shows no symptoms and goes away by itself, but can be serious. HPV can cause genital warts and some types of cancer, including cervical cancer. The HPV vaccine provides almost 100% protection from nine HPV types if all doses are received at the correct intervals and given before infection. It is estimated that prior to the vaccine, up to 90% of Australians were infected with the HPV. Since the inception of the free school vaccination program in 2007, the HPV infection rate has reduced by 92%, lowering the rate of cervical abnormalities. People aged 14 years or under required two doses of the vaccine with a six-month interval, while people aged 15 years and older need three doses of the vaccine over six months, according to the Cancer Council Victoria. A recommendation to reduce the dose requirement from 2 to 1 is also being considered by Australia's Health Minister Mark Butler. With its 2035 target in sight, Australia will become the first country in the world to eradicate cervical cancer. Monica Canlas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, William. Thank you, Giona. And for those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The Philippine government failed in its plea to dismiss cases against two Japanese nationals who are supposed to be subjected for deportation. Dante Amento tells us why. The Pasay Regional Trial Court Branch 109 has proceeded with trial over the cases against Yuki Watanabe, alias Luffy, and Tumulubu Saito, both Japanese nationals, on Thursday, February 2, 2023. Watanabe and Saito are subject to deportation based on the Japanese government's request. But since the court did not dismiss their cases, they cannot be deported. No, it was not. Uh, in fact, we proceeded with the presentation of prosecution's evidence. With the uh, proceedings of the court today, with the exception of evidence, the motion to dismiss is impliedly denied. Because uh, we should not have proceeded with the trial of the case if the case would have been earlier dismissed by the judge already. According to their lawyer, attorney El Jun Rico, there will be another hearing scheduled on February 7, 2023. Attorney Rico also clarified his client can't resist if their government ask his deportation after he will be cleared of his case. Well, he has no means to resist it, if that is the call of the Japanese government. Meanwhile, Department of Justice or DOJ Secretary Crispin Boying Rimulia said there are two Japanese nationals will be deported in the next few days. They are already cleared of their cases, but Rimulia refused to name them. We will uh, be deporting some people uh, when they are available to be deported already, and uh, maybe two of them will be deported uh, ahead of the others, or hopefully three ahead of the others, but it will be a few, uh, a little delay involved, just to make sure that uh, we comply with the rules and the law. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, joint police operatives arrested a man in Barangay Hubas and Ale, Northern Samar, while transporting 10 kilograms of suspected shabu on January 31. The suspect was caught driving without seatbelts and the vehicle was not registered. 
But when the police investigated the seized suspected illegal drugs with a street value of 69 million pesos. Based on police initial investigation, the suspect has transported the illegal drugs from Luzon to Mindanao and they are yet to find out his possible contacts in eastern Visayas. The suspect was identified as Mangayao Lapan Mitomara, a resident of Paliparan das Marinas Cavite. Mitomara has been detained at the Allen Municipal Police Station and is currently facing drug charges. The implementation of the Trusted Operator Program Container Registry and Monitoring System or TOP CRMS by the Philippine Ports Authority or PPA has temporarily been cancelled indefinitely. According to Jay Santiago, General Manager of the PPA with 4 out of 5 votes, the PPA board has decided to postpone its implementation indefinitely. The board wants a more thorough study of the said program. The top CRMS aims to eliminate container deposit and management and manage empty containers. However, stakeholders from the shipping industry have opposed the project. On the ninth day of the search operation, the whereabouts of the Cessna plane and its passengers is still an ongoing mystery to the incident management team in Isabela. On the other hand, the encounter that occurred in Sierra Madre will not affect the ongoing search operation of the missing airplane, according to the 5th Infantry Division of the Philippine Army. Alan Manansala will tell us why. For more than 15 hours of circling around the passable area where the airplane is located, the two air assets of the Philippine Air Force have failed to find its location. The IMT Isabella conceived that the aerial search is the quickest method to locate the Cessna plane's five passengers and its pilot. So earlier, the so-called 925 continued to fly around while the UE-2662's target is to check the coastal area of Sierra Madre. At 9.20 in the morning, the troops of the 5th Infantry Division of the Philippine Army was alerted when a battle between the 95th Infantry Battalion and the terrorist group broke out in Sierra Madre. Nevertheless, the 5th Infantry Division Public Affairs Office spokesperson Captain Rigor Pamitan said that this encounter will not affect the ongoing search operation of the Cessna 206. They also assured that the rescue groups doing the on-ground search in Sierra Madre will be safe from danger. Since uh, meron tayong naka-detail na troops dito sa uh, ongoing na search natin sa nawawalang sesta, we also have different different detailed troops na nandun sa province of Cagayan uh, conducting focus military operation. Alan Manansala, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. In other news, the Bureau of Investigation, or BI, on Thursday, February 2nd, warned anew the public and the foreigners in the country against scammers on social media who pretend to be connected with the agency and offer fake immigration services. Commissioner Norman Tancinco explained that photos of their employees, their badges, and even the logo of the Bureau are being used by perpetrators to victimize foreign nationals. Tancinco added that the scam has been proliferating on Facebook and other messaging platforms. Some accounts were also created to pretend as immigration lawyers and legal officers of the agency who handle immigration concerns. Movement for Restoration of Peace and Order or MRPO Chairperson Ka Kuen Chua has raised the issue during a Senate Public Order and Dangerous Drugs Committee hearing on Tuesday, January 31. Chua revealed that scammers have been offering illegal service to foreigners to be removed from the BI's blacklist with a free fee ranging from 1 million to 5 million pesos. Similar warnings was issued by the Bureau in September last year after reports of scammers offering illegal immigration services surfaced online. National Power Corporation, or NAPACOR, struggles to pay its fuel bills of 11.4 billion pesos. The agency said the budget is not enough and they are now seeking for loans and funds as off-grid areas in the country may experience power outages because of the matter. Bernadette Tinoy will tell us why. 
More than 1 million households from off-grid areas in the country may experience power interruptions after the National Power Corporation or NAPOCOR failed to pay the fuel bills. NAPOCOR said that the requirement of fuel for Small Power Utilities Group or SPOG is 11.4 billion pesos, but the agency's budget only covers 7.5 billion pesos. NAPOCOR President Fernando Martin Nani Rojas said that there are available fuels but the concern is the funding deficit. The, the big issue is the funding deficit, right? There is fuel to be bought, but yung pambili ang problema. The Department of Energy, or DOE, will finalize the status of the matter to prevent the possible power interruptions. According to DOE Secretary Rafael Lutilia, the country experienced a fuel shortage because of the increased price from international market, while Under Secretary Rowena Guevara said that if the fuel bills will be paid, there will be no power interruption in off-grid areas. But for worst-case scenario, the reduction of power operation will be implemented. When in 1973, oil prices went up from a few cents to, to uh, dollars, how did the Filipino country, uh, Filipino people respond? There was no magic wand. We had to absorb the cost. And that's the reality we have to live with. Best case scenario, kung paano sila ngayon nag-ooperate, ganun pa din. Best case scenario yan kapag ka nakuha natin yung loan at nakuha natin yung additional funding. Worst case scenario yung pinakita ni Ma'am Odette kanina na may reduction in hours of operation. Meanwhile, InfraWatch Philippines convener Terry Ridon said that power interruption will also affect the tourism sector as the off-grid areas in the country covers barangay and municipal island. Siyempre, meron din pong mga tourism areas dito na pwede yung maapektuhan, ano? Kasi... Siyempre, off-grid areas, yan kasama ho dyan yung mga island barangay, island municipalities. Meron din pong mga uh, malalaking mga resorts na pwede pong maapektuhan. Ibig sabihin pong usapin ko ng tourism arrivals, yung pong uh, pagpapalago ng turismo, baka maapektuhan po ito. Kung hindi po mag-intervene sa pinaka-maagang panahon, ang ating uh, pamahalaan, ano? particular ang pambansang pamahalaan. Napocor has secured 1.1 billion pesos from prior year's national government subsidy which was approved by the Department of Budget and Management or DBM. The agency still seeks to find new loans and funds to better prevent possible power outages in the country. Bernadettino, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The United States suggests water cuts as the Colorado River, which provides water to over 40 million people, continues to dry. Nida Sadanda will tell us why, live. Good evening, Nida Good evening, Giona. Majority of Western United States currently faces a drought, which has severely impacted the Colorado River. They were also expected to come to an agreement to reduce water usage earlier this week. However, California, the biggest consumer of the Colorado River, failed to join their proposal, which was federally requested by the other states. Over 40 million people depend on the Colorado River for drinking water, and with the current drought, more water has been used than what is available. Statistically, the water flow in the river has reduced 20% in 2000 and will double by 2050. The six states submitted a plan to the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation and detailed options for reducing water usage. Together, the states recognized that there is nearly no water left in the Colorado River. Meanwhile, the six states Six states also plan to reduce their water usage from lakes Powell and Mead to preserve the two critical water pools and to protect the water system. Fiona? Thank you, Nidesa, for that live report. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Giona Pravado, live from London, United Kingdom. Good evening. Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB declared that there is still no extension of franchise validity for traditional jeepneys, emphasizing that PUV modernization should be pushed. JP Nunez will tell us why. 
The franchise validity of traditional jeepneys are still until March in provinces while April in the National Capital Region. Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB said that the board is on track in pushing the PUV modernization program of the government. Its board member Riza Marie Paches emphasized that the program has long been introduced to the jeepney operators and they are expecting for their compliance. Right now, based on the current issuance of the board, ay yung deadline natin ay yun pa rin yun. Wala pa po tayong uh, nailabas na uh, kautusan regarding sa extension. However, Attorney Paches said that many operators are still not showing compliance with the modernization program. She recalls that it was already extended for about three times. Dinidelay lang nila masyado yung compliance, but at the end of the day, Compliance is what we need so that the full modernization can come in. LTFRB NCR Director Attorney Zona Tamayo admits that there are traditional jeepney operators who still doubt the program. Admittedly, until now, marami pa hong tanong. Marami pa hong hindi talaga nakakakita ng konsepto ng buong epekto ho nitong modernization. The board encourages traditional jeepney operators to form a cooperative or join existing ones to help them procure the new unit of modernized jeepney. Under PUV modernization program, the government will provide loan for operators to help them buy modernized jeep. Yung pag-uutang ng sasakyan, hindi naman sila actually ang magbabayad. Ang kooperatiba din ang magbabayad. Ang kooperatiba ang mangungutang ng sasakyan para mapalitan yung kanilang lumang sasakyan. The program is also intended to rule out the boundary system which is common in traditional jeepneys. Drivers who will be part of the cooperative will be given regular salary and entitled of the legislative benefits such as pension or retirement benefits among others. Sa modernization of part po dyan ay yun hong pagtanggal ng tinatawag ng boundary system. Dapat po ay swelduhan na ho ang ating mga drivers. So they are considered our drivers po under the modernization program are considered as regular employees of the corporation or the cooperative. Meanwhile, traditional jeepney drivers were fearful over looming jeepney phase out. They are afraid that their operators may struggle to afford the new unit of modernized jeepney. Kawawa naman yung mga mawawala ng anak buhay. Kasi... Hindi naman makakapasok agad dyan sa moderneng jeep na yan eh. Hindi naman basa-basa yan. Kung i-pay-pay out ka agad to, maraming magugutom na driver. Nako po, patay tayo. Panigurado to, balik ko sa action na naman. Walang ibang gagawin. Hindi po, hindi naman po pwedeng tutunga nga ako sa bahay. Magugutom rin tayo. Kaya ka lang, gagawa't gagawa talaga ng paraan. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Imported onions from China are widely available in Divisoria. The commodities can be bought for 140 to 180 pesos per kilogram. It would cost even less if you buy in bulk at wholesale prices. The cost of a bundle varies from 900 to 1,300 pesos and is only 100 to 130 pesos per kilogram. However, the sales of imported onions is still low because buyers still prefer purchasing local onions with a retail price of 230 to 280 pesos because those are tastier and last longer. The supply of local onions remains limited on the market. In other news, the Department of Education or DepEd vows to investigate the purchase of alleged procurement of overpriced cameras, but the model is only an entry level. Janice Inhente will tell us why. The Department of Education or DepEd is now coordinating with their regional offices if any of them purchased an entry-level DSLR camera Canon EOS 1500D. This follows a viral post on social media by a photojournalist who inquired why an entry-level camera apparently cost 155,000 pesos. 
The photo on the post showed a DepEd sticker on the gadget with an acquisition cost being compared with a similar model which only sells for 23,000 pesos on an online shop. According to DepEd spokesperson attorney Michael Poa, the agency doesn't have any entry-level cameras such as Canon EOS 1500D. The picture itself, sa totoo lang po, hindi namin ma-determine kung saan, ano yan, saan region po galing yan. Ngayon, kung mabibigyan kami ng information kung saan region galing yan, again, hindi natin minamasama kasi yan. Eh. As you can see from the picture posted, yung naka-block out po kasi lahat ng uh, information, even the serial number of the camera. So we couldn't check our inventory. Pero kung mabibigyan po tayo ng information dyan, makakaasa po kayo na talagang titingnan natin yan. Hindi naman po tayo magiging, uh, hindi natin babaliwalain bigla-bigla lang yung mga ganyang bagay. According to POA, the department has procured cameras and paraphernalias last 2019 to be used for DepEd's broadcasting, live coverages, and streamings, but it was a high-end model. Based on the procurement document released in 2019, the DEP had purchased two 5D Mark IV DSLR cameras worth 246,796 pesos, 227,998 pesos camcorder, DSLR camera battery grip, tripods, and condenser shotgun microphones. Poa explained that the purchase went through a market survey and bids the lowest price. Just to explain no, na bakit namin sinasabi na hindi, hindi siya ganun kalayo, it's because yung 800,000, if you consider uh, all these quantities and all these units, uh, masasabi naman natin, based, again, hindi ako expert, but based on the market survey, nasa ganun po eh. The UNTV News team tried to ask a photojournalist if the price indicated in the procurement budget of the DepEd for the cameras purchased in 2019 was overpriced or not. Tama naman sa tingin ko yung maraming pricing, that time, 2019, ganyan lang halaga niyan. Yes, from quarter, 5D Mark IV. Tama naman ang presyo. Walang overpricing, nandun lang yung range dyan, doon sa items na yun. Yung 5D Mark IV, two pieces, tsaka video cut. Tama yung pricing yun. Uh, nakikita ko lang kasi sila sa mga nagpo-post yung uh, Canon uh, 1,500 D, yung maliit. Na yun ba yung halagang 200,000? Well, talagang eh, kaduda-duda. Pero kung ang item o unit na binili ay delay, Canon 5D Mark IV, at yun talaga nakuha, tama, uh, tama yun. Nasa range yung, yung presyo. Meanwhile, another request for quotation in September 2022 for a mirrorless camera with entry-level specs an approved budget of 170,000 pesos for one unit has also been questioned. In response, POA explained that the said procurement has been cancelled. Yan pong uh, procurement na yan, which was, I think the request for quotation was dated September 2022, ay na din po noong November 15. 2022. Siyempre po, ang tanong, bakit po na-cancel? Na-cancel po siya kasi bago pa umusad yung procurement process ay nabigyan na yung karaga ng tatlong cameras. Janice and Hente, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Bureau of Internal Revenue or BIR Commissioner Romeo Limagi Jr. on Thursday, February 2nd led the filing of tax complaints under the agency's run after tax evader program before the Department of Justice or DOJ against 53 erring taxpayers for tax evasion amounting to 3.57 billion pesos. The respondents were charged with willful attempt to evade or defeat the payment of taxes due willful failure to pay or remit its income tax liabilities, willful failure to pay taxes and include those who filed their tax returns without corresponding payment. The Bureau explained that the filing of charges were done ahead of the deadline for the filing of tax returns, reminding taxpayers who intend to fraudulently evade payment of taxes to file and pay the correct taxes to avoid being penalized. Limagi warns tax evaders that their agency is serious with the enforcement activities on a national scale. He also noted that by sharing this to the public, they will be assured that the Bureau is committed to ensure that every taxpayer is paying their fair share of taxes. The BIR chief's filing of tax charges has been accompanied by Deputy Commissioner for Legal Group Marisa 
Cabreros Enforcement Advocacy Service Assistant Commissioner James Roldan, together with the officials from the Prosecution Division, Large Taxpayer or LT Collection Enforcement Division, and the participating revenue regions. Ten revenue regions and LT divisions have filed separate criminal cases against the erring tax evaders. Our Kasang Bahay, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. Before we close, we will leave you with the word, giving glory to God from the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24. It says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to do good works. the reasons behind the news the 2nd of February 2023 reasons we deliver to you as they unfold and because we need to know we will always ask why I am William Theo we serve the people we give glory to God <laughs>